If you have any questions as we go, use the chat. Um, and there'll be a couple of times where I might have questions for you um, that I want you to answer within the chat. Um, so yeah, just feel participate as much as you can um, to get the most out of it and for me to not feel like I'm just talking to myself. Awesome. So the aim, understand kind of the training versus recovery balance um, and why we need to recover. Um, and then we're just going to look at a few different recovery methods. Like I say, primarily sleep today, but we'll touch on a few others that we'll touch on later. So why do we need to recover? So to improve as athletes and to improve our performances, we need to train at a level above what the body is used to. Um, and therefore that creates what's, what a high degree of fatigue due to the high levels of training. Um, and it's that fatigue that can impair performance both in the short term, so from one training session to another, or in the long term with what's called chronic over, chronic overtraining, injury, um, and that long-term fatigue syndrome. So we have to manage that recovery and that training so that we're getting improved performance that's gradual, um, but we're not getting a decrease in performance or, or a continued decline in performance. So what I would like to know is what does recovery mean to you? And what do you currently do to aid your recovery? So in the chat feature, what what does it mean to you and what do you currently do to improve that um, recovery for yourself? I'll wait for a few to comment and put some stuff in and then we can use them as a discussion point to start with. So we've got stretching, rest days, day off, drink lots of water. Period after exercise, rest, stretching. Days off again, rest days. Stretching. Lots of protein after exercise. And lots of stretching. Um, so what I now want you to just comment on is what factors affect your recovery? So what factors affect if you do more, if you do less, uh, and how much focus you put on your recovery? What what things affect that and change that? Or is your recovery always the same? Intensity of the session, good one. training if you feel unwell more recovery if you're not feeling good anything else give me one more minute so these are ones i came up with so intensity of training so the harder the training session the bigger the recovery should be uh volume of training the longer or the more you train in a day or a week um the the, the bigger your recovery should be frequency the more often you train the more emphasis there should be on your recovery um and the quality of rest so this is an important one i think not all rest is equal so we'll come on to something in a minute around like the big rocks but if you do more of the right things and the better things, you can actually do less recovery and get more effect for it um, versus doing more recovery and having less effect for it because you're doing the wrong things or you're not doing them at the right time. And then our nutrition is really important because um, the way, the amount you eat and what you eat will have a massive effect on recovery. So recovery strategies. So I talk about um, what what's called the 80-20 rule. Uh, or um, Pareto's law, um, which essentially says that for most 
occurrences or most things we do, about 80% of our results and our effects come from 20% of our causes or efforts. Um, so what that means is if I was to do 10 things, um, trying to achieve an outcome, two of them would give me 80% of my, my result and my outcome, and then the other eight would only give me 20%. Now, what this then suggests is that actually if we spend more time doing the 20%, we're going to get a bigger improvement or a bigger result than if we spend more time doing the 80%. So it's just about focusing energy and focusing time and effort um, wh wh where is most important for, for whatever it is we're trying to achieve. So what I would like you to do is in the group chat, um, can you list me two, maybe three things that you think would make up 20%, so the, the big rocks, they're going to give us the most results for our recovery. What are your big rocks? So we've got sleep, uh, stretching and nutrition and rest and nutrition. Anyone got anything different? Give another minute. Okay, cool. So Yes, yeah, sleep, really good one. So, so my big rocks consist of nutrition, sleep, and hydration. And then my smaller rocks, which I think are supplementary, cryotherapy, so hot and cold therapies, um, compression garments, massages, active recovery, and stretching. So for me, if you focus on the things on the left-hand side here, you will get the majority of your recovery done with little to no effort. So sleep properly, eat properly and hydrate. You'll recover to at least 80% every time, if not more. These little things may top up that last little bit, but if you focus your time and energy here, but you sleep terribly, you eat like a baby um, and you don't drink enough water, you will then have very limited results and therefore your recovery will always, you'll always feel like you're struggling, even though you're like, oh, but, I do recovery sessions, I have ice baths, I, I have a massage. But actually, all these things are just allowing you to take a hammer. In. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit more around sleep. Um, sleep has lots of benefits, so it's shown to significantly reduce injury the more you sleep. Um, again, if you sleep uh, seven hours as opposed to less than five, um, you're around four times more likely to develop an illness if you sleep less. Um, and it has a lot of other kind of cognitive performance benefits, um, as well as allowing your body to grow and repair more effectively um, when we sleep. So we know that sleep is important and has a real positive effect. So question for the group, again, chuck this in the chat for me. How many hours sleep do you think we should have? Or how many hours sleep do you think you should have more so than just anyone? Seven to eight, 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 eight to nine, eight, eight. So consensus kind of in and around um, eight. So the consensus is around seven to nine for normal people, um, although the average person only gets around five to seven. Um, but an athlete should have considerably more. So many pro athletes sleep around 10 to 12 hours. Um, and it's really important for improving performance. So a question for the group again, what's better, seven and a half hours sleep or eight hours sleep? So seven and a half or eight? 
We've got one person on it, two, eight. Anyone else want to throw anything different? Or oh, eight, the consensus. Okay, perfect, cool. Um, so I would argue that seven and a half hours sleep is better than eight hours sleep. Um, and I will tell you why. So our body has a very strange way of doing things. Um, and we actually sleep in 90 minute cycles. So uh, one and a half hours. So if I was to sleep for seven and a half hours, I would go through five full cycles. If I was to sleep for eight hours, I would find myself just coming back into my deep sleep and then I'd have my alarm go off and wake up. And this explains to us sometimes why sometimes you wake up feeling really fresh, but you've had less hours of sleep, but actually other times your alarm goes off and you've slept quite long, but you feel really groggy, really tired still. Actually, that's probably because you've been woken up when you're in your deepest part of your sleep because you haven't woken up at the end of that 90 minute cycle as we start to, to go awake. So what you see is in the cycles, we go from being awake to in really deep sleep to closer to awake to deep sleep back up to closer to awake deep sleep and we, we cycle all the way through that and then as the night goes on we get closer and closer back to awake now if my alarm goes off here i'm going to wake up feeling fairly fresh natural actually i was pretty much awake anyway if my alarm goes off down here i'm going to feel terrible when i wake up because actually i was in the deepest part of my sleep i've been disturbed uh, i wasn't ready to wake up so Sometimes it's important to think about the amount of time we sleep and trying to stick to those 19 cycles is a really good hard and fast rule. Um, there's a lot of information on here around the different stages and what actually happens at each one, but just due to the time of this session, I won't go through it all, but you're more than welcome to go back through the slides and have a look at them. Um, the most important stages are stage three and four, which again occur in the latter stages of that 90 minute cycle. So we have to go through that 90 minute cycle to get the, to get the benefits of sleep. Um, who knows what circadian rhythm is? Does anyone has anyone heard that term? Does anyone know what it means? Anyone want to hazard a guess in the group, in the chat? What is circadian rhythm? Um, if you do know what it is or you think you know what it is, why is it important? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Okay, so no, no one knows what it is, that's fine. So circadian rhythm is the internal body clock that lets your body and the organisms within it know the rising and setting patterns of the sun. So it knows when to be awake and when to be asleep. Um, so essentially it's little time pieces or like a 24 hour smartwatch in our body that tell us when it's time to feel sleepy, when it's time to feel alert and awake, um, and when it's time to start falling asleep and it affects our body temperature, metabolism and the hormones within the body. Now, this helps us because it allows us to understand why some people are early birds, naturally, and why some people are night owls. Um, and it can also allow us to maximise our sleep pattern and schedule accordingly so that you make sure you wake up in the right phase of sleep um, and at the right time of day to maximise your energy levels. Um, and it can also be used to fight and manage jet lag if you're having to travel across the country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the chat a link to a questionnaire. Um, now, you don't have to do this right now, um, but I think it would be good to, to do at some point for yourself to just have an understanding um, of your natural sleep pattern and when and how you sleep. Um, so what you'll get is you'll get a results screen, something similar to, to this one here, which is mine. Um, so you'll get a score which defines up on here. So I actually sit in what's called an intermediate category. Um, so I'm not a morning or an evening person by trade. Um, I sit somewhere in between and kind of fluctuate a little bit. So what it tells me is that my natural bedtime is at 11.45 p.m. So this is the time where it's most likely that if I go into, get into bed, I'm going to go straight straight to sleep. Um, but I, any time after 9.30, I'm probably able to fall asleep because that's when my melatonin onset 
um, occurs and my body starts to feel sleepy and slightly more drowsy. Um, so what, I, what you can use this to do is start to determine the appropriate times for you to go to sleep um, and to wake up. So I wake up at 6.30 um, and what I've set is hour and a half schedules to know the optimal time to go to sleep. So if I can't go to sleep at 11, I will go to sleep at half 12 because I know that that's the optimal time to get in full cycles as opposed to going at half 11 and waking up halfway through a cycle. Um, versus if I can't go to bed at 9.30, I'll wait till, till 2 11. How do we improve sleep? Um, so before bed, avoid blue light. So um, turn kind of night mode on, on, on your phone. Um, try to avoid laptops and smartphones and monitors if we can. Um, have a constant wake up time. And when you do wake up, get exposure to bright light as quickly as possible. So you can use a light alarm clock or simulated sunrises for this. Um, don't snooze your alarm. Wake up, get out of bed, get moving. Um, you could use meditation to, to improve that kind of relaxation of the mind and, and improve falling asleep. Um, foods that have a high glycemic index so that release kind of um, energy slowly, such as uh, brown pastas and rices, um, sweet potato, a really good pre-sleep. Um, and so is protein, um, but higher fat or fatty meals um, can have a negative effect on your sleep. Try not to watch TV. Um, and if you are going to watch TV, try and watch something that's quite light um, and not too, too much on the brain. So something that you watch before, something funny, something comedy. Um, don't drink too much late at night. So try and get your hydration in earlier through the day. Um, and then you can use supplements, but you can also just use different recovery methods mentally. Um, and make sure you've got a nice comfy mattress and fresh bread because that's always going to help with your sleep. So a few little final tips for me to, to think about. Um, even if you're the most tired in the world, have a little bit of time before you get into bed to wind down. Don't just get in and go straight to sleep because you'll probably still be brain active. You'll still be thinking and functioning. So therefore, you just need that little bit of time whether it's reading, um, just sitting and chilling. Um, or taking the time to, to listen to a podcast or listen to something just to, just to chill yourself out before you go to sleep. Um, it will help you fall asleep, but it will also help you sleep better. Um, you can use the journey home from training. So a lot of us train quite late, often quite late. Um, so actually using that journey home may be an important period of time to allow us to wind down. Um, and then where possible, be ready for bed when you start winding down. So don't wind down downstairs and then realise I've got up, change into my pyjamas, brush my teeth, comb my hair, get my bag ready for tomorrow. And then you're just waking yourself up all over again. Um, in that final hour before bed, which is probably the most important for improving sleep, um, the aim is to create a drop in your heart rate and a drop in core temperature. So in terms of your heart rate, um, what relaxes you? So do something that relaxes you. Don't do something that stresses you out. If you know watching... Uh, your mate's videos on Instagram just gets you riled up. Um, don't do that. Do something that's relaxing. Read a book. Listen to something chilled out. Chat with your family. Chat with, chat with your friends. Um, and in terms of core temperature, warm showers and warm baths are better than cold showers and cold baths for, for lowering core temperature. Um, and they should allow you to start to get that nat natural drop and that, that fall, which will help us fall asleep. Um if you can't sleep or you struggle to sleep, so don't try and force yourself. Accepting the fact that you can't sleep is fine. Um, it's when you sit there trying to force yourself to sleep that you just have a negative sleep pattern. Um, if you're in bed for like 20 to 30 minutes and you're really struggling to fall asleep, stop, get up, go do something, something light, something to unwind, maybe read a book um, and just reset yourself and then come back and try to go to sleep again. Sitting there in bed for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, an hour, going, oh, I need to go to sleep, I want to sleep, I want to sleep. Your brain's just whirring too much and it won't allow you to sleep effectively. So take the time, go away and come back and sleep again. Um, listen to something as opposed to watching something. The light um, and the distraction from watching something is far more than if you're just listening to a podcast. Um, have a constant wake-up time. Um, pick that time and then don't lay in for more than 90 minutes any time in the week so at the weekend if you normally wake up at 7 don't lay in past 8 30 
um, because it's what's called a form of social jet lag and can actually have negative sleep effects going forward. Um, if you have to sleep on the road and you want to improve your sleep, um, stick to the same bedtime routine and habits. Uh, take your pillow and pillowcase from home because it's familiarity and your brain will associate with good sleep. Um, and then take a familiar smell and pictures of people or things you love because, um, again, it's just creating that nice, healthy sleeping environment. And try not to do other things in your bed apart from sleeping. Um, so don't do your homework. Try not to watch TV. Try and create an association that when you get into bed, your body is going to sleep. Um, and then finally, just for me to flip through, if you need to have a nap, um, because you've had a short night's sleep or you, you think it's beneficial to you. Um, they can be really effective for improving performance and alertness, um, but just try and make sure that they're done effectively. So no more than 20 minutes. Um, ideal time is 15 to 20 minutes. Find somewhere to do it where you're not going to be disturbed um, and, and just try and be left alone in a silent, quiet place with no other distractions. Have something with caffeine in it before your nap. Um, and then by the time you finish on that, that caffeine would just start kicking in and will give you that increase in kind of alertness and performance. Set an alarm clock so you don't sleep longer than you should. And then once that alarm clock goes up, get up, get moving, crack on. No more than 30 minutes because that will lead to, to that grogginess and that feeling of sleep inertia. Um, and then that's it. Just get up, go for a walk and get yourself moving again. Um, naps are great for giving you an energy boost and should be ruled out. Um, but if you're napping every day to make up for a lack of sleep, then there's issues within your sleep that need to be addressed. Um, and where possible, try not to nap past 3 p.m. Um, because that will have a knock-on effect for your sleep that night. Perfect. We will finish that there. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything on that? Any thoughts um, that didn't answer or any questions in there? Um, happy to answer. If not, you're ready to, you're able to shoot from now. Um, but I'll hang on for the kind of five or until everyone's gone to answer any remaining questions. You think any questions welcome on any topic? no right or wrong answer Natasha um, it's around understanding your natural preference and then building around that for me um, like if you know you're a night person training later in the evening is going to be of benefit to you um, and trying to force yourself to get up and do a 6am gym session is probably never going to be the right thing to do um, so I don't think there's a, there's a right way around with that um, I think you're better off just understanding your preference. So, like, I know that I I am a struggle to get up really early and go and train, but actually fitting that in in the latter afternoon or the latter part of the day is slightly better for me. Whereas someone who's a, a real early bird might not have an issue getting up at kind of four or five o'clock or something silly like that to go and train. Um, so don't see it as which one should you be. See it as which one am I, which that question is really good for. Um, and then, okay, how do I maximize this and how do I work my schedule around that so that I'm ticking all the boxes?